Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today I'm going to talk about uh, mast cells. Uh, these are the cells which were first described by this guy, Paul Erle, uh, in, 19, uh, in 1878 and 1879. Uh, he described and named these cells as mast cells. Uh, this is Paul Erle. And this is the guy who did a lot of pioneering work in immunology that we have discussed earlier. For instance, he uh, uh, described uh, antibodies for the first time. He was the first to uh, negate a uh, positive idea that the host is defenseless and there is nothing that can protect the host actually. And uh, Ehrlich and Bering, they carried out some pioneering ex experiments uh, and Mechnikov, uh, they, 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 these guys actually, uh, you know, brought about a revolution in uh, understanding of our immune system. And they discovered some uh, molecules uh, that are cells that uh, actually uh, were involved in the defense system of our bodies. For instance, the Mechnikov described macrophages. And this guy, uh, Paul Ehrlich described antibodies and he discovered the complement system uh, that exists in our bodies. And he also did some pioneering work on diphtheria for which uh, uh, he was, uh, he actually wanted to raise antiserum for diphtheria. And for his work on uh, diphtheria, he was awarded with uh, uh, Nobel Prize in 19. Uh, and uh, due to his contribution, uh, a genus of bacteria, Alicia, is also named after this guy. So uh, he was a wonderful guy, a German physician who was uh, uh, working uh, in the field actually, and he um, introduced this new discipline of immunology in which we learned that the host or the organisms infected by the pathogens are not defenseless, that uh, the human being or other, uh, you know, uh, species, they have proper defense systems against the microbes. Uh, now we turn to the mast cells, which were discovered by him in 1878 and 1879. Uh, if you look at the normal physiological functions of the mast cells, Normal physiological functions means that mast cells, is, these are our immune cells, they are inside our body. So these cells are there in the body to do some routine work, which is needed in the body. So uh, the normal functional, uh, for normal functional reasons, the mast cells which are there inside our bodies would do vasodilation which is, uh, you know, dilation of the blood vessels, which is needed sometimes. It would be needed inside the body to in, uh, increase the blood flow to a particular area. So they cause vasodilation because these cells are equipped with uh, some, uh, you know, chemokines and uh, leukotrienes and different types of, you know, enzymes that are doing different functions, including vasodilations. For instance, they have histamine. So histamine uh, does vasodilation. When it is released from these cells, this uh, histamine would cause vasodilation or increase in the volume of the vessel so it's to uh, allow the blood uh, you know, to, uh, to flow to a particular area. And they are very important for vascular hemostasis uh, innate in adaptive immune responses, angiogenesis, uh, you know, the, uh, are also releasing different growth factors um, uh, like vesicular, uh, vesicular endothelial growth factors, for instance. So they also, these cells are contributing to the formation of vessels, angiogenesis. And venom detoxification, they are also very important for venom detoxification if there is a um, snake bite or, you know, some bee bite or something. So that venom detoxification is carried out with the help of these mast cells. So it normally uh, would uh, do a lot of, uh, you know, functions inside the body. And they are also important uh, when there is some kind of disease for 
pathological reasons. The diseases that are related to mast cells, um, when the mast cells have, uh, you know, some problem or the mast cells are, uh, you know, uh, sometimes they are involved in different conditions as well. For instance, the most common is hypersensitivity or allergy. Asthma, anaphylaxis, or hypersensitivity reactions that are taking place in our bodies. Uh, gastrointestinal disorders, a lot of gastrointestinal disorders, they uh, happen due to, uh, you know, uh, uh, mast cells degranulations. And many types of malignancies and cardiovascular diseases, all these are different, you know, diseases in which the mast cells, uh, you know, participate quite actively in all these cases. And if you look at the origin of the mast cells that where these cells are produced in our body, uh, so they originate from the CD3, uh, uh, 34 positive hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. And then these mast cells progenitors, uh, they migrate from the bone marrow uh, to the blood and then onto other tissues where they mature under the influence of stem cell factor and tyrosine kinase receptor, KIT, which is also known as CD117. So um, uh, their origin is from the hematopoietic stem cells. And uh, then, uh, you know, the myelite stem cells, they uh, give rise to different types of cells, including these uh, mast cells progenitors, which are then, uh, you know, which then flow to the blood. If these are the basophils, the basophils mature there in the bone marrow, but uh, the mast cells, they do not mature in the bone marrow. They would uh, just join the blood and through the blood, these mast cells are carried to all the vascularized tissues of your body where uh, through, uh, uh, you know, from the vessels, they would just, you know, uh, they, they, they would squeeze out from the vessels into the tissues and then they mature there in the tissues into mature mast cells with the help of these two, uh, you know, things, the stem cell factor and the uh, tyrosine kinase receptor KIT. This is a receptor for the stem cell factor on the mast cells. So uh, when the stem cell factors binds to this particular things, it contributes to the mast cell maturation or development. And uh, as I told you, these are present in all vascularized tissues except brain and retina. Uh, these are present in the gastrointestinal tract and all the, uh, you know, interfaces of the body where your body and environment are joining with each other. So um, um, in some organs like uh, you know, in the respiratory system, you would find just, uh, you know, uh, very few uh, of them, uh, you know, under the uh, uh, respiratory epithelium, but uh, when uh, it is needed for them to perform some function, then they are recruited to that particular site. But anyway, they are present in all these uh, uh, different types of tissues, uh, and they are performing different functions that we would discuss during this presentation. So um, I think if it is not pink, then we can just go ahead. Um, now in this slide, you can see a basophil and mast cells. I told you a basophil originates um, in the bone marrow and the basophil also matures there in the bone marrow, but not the mast cell. It has to migrate to the tissues via blood, uh, where it would, uh, you know, uh, mature with the help of stem cell factor, which binds here to this particular receptor kit. And um, these uh, basophils and mast cells, some people, uh, you know, just confuse them and they, uh, you know, uh, uh, would, uh, because of the similar types of, uh, types of mediators are common mediators that these uh, two cells are secreting. But there are a lot of, there are lots of differences uh, morphologically, chemically, and functionally. Uh, you can uh, see 
here that morphologically these cells are different from each other. If you look at the number of granules which are inside there, if you look at the structure of the nucleus which is there, so they are different. And, and even if you look at uh, the different types of receptors, these are just, uh, you know, um, activating receptors, just like for this, it is KIT and activating receptor for this one, for the basophil is interleukin T, uh, uh, 3R. So uh, these are different priming factors given here, for instance, the stem cell factor, interleukin 4, interleukin 6, these are the priming or activating factor, factors for the mast cells. Uh, when the mast cells come in contact, for instance, with uh, bacteria or a virus or some allergen, for instance, these priming factors will further, you know, enhance that particular response. And if, uh, if you look at the priming factors for the basophil, these are interleukin 3, 5, 35, uh, the GM, CSF, NGF, et cetera. So, uh, there is a difference in the priming or activating factors for the mast cells and the basal cells. And if you look at what is inside the granules, because these are, both of them are coming out of the myelite stem cells. And, uh, but the granules uh, present here and the granules present in the basal cells, they uh, have something in common in some mediators or specific to the mast cells and the basal fields. For instance, you can see the, this is the group of, uh, you know, mediators, mast cell mediators, which can contain uh, heparin uh, and uh, tryptase, chymase uh, and catepsin, et cetera. These are different types of uh, enzymes, the Brennan and uh, prostaglandin two, and there are other some, uh, uh, growth factors, vesicular endothelial growth factor C and D, stem cell factor, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and different kinds of interleukins that you see here, including this colony stimulating factor. So these are the factors to, uh, which are specific to the mast cell. We call them mast cell mediators. The granules here are filled with all these different types of enzymes and things doing different functions. And the granules of mast cells also contains these histamine grains and B and other, you know, uh, factors, uh, 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 cytokines and growth factors. Uh, while the basophil specific mediators are given here, so there is a difference in the chemical mediators. Although some are common, but some mediators are specific to either mast cells or the basophils. So uh, you can also guess about the function of, uh, uh, you know, the mast cells and how many different uh, functions would the mast cell would, uh, would be involved in. You know, when you look at just the mediator, for instance, histamine, which is involved in so many different things like vasodilation, et cetera. Uh, like uh, tryptases, chymases, catepsin, et cetera, different types of enzymes which are involved in uh, different functions, like for instance, some of these enzymes are activators of metalloproteases, and the metalloproteases again are involved in, uh, you know, uh, uh, disintegration of the extracellular matrix, and uh, it's uh, going to enhance that inflammatory response in your bodies. And these different cytokines also, some are pro-inflammatory cytokines that are secreting here. The growth factors. Ingenesis that we talked about also, uh, you know, uh, would uh, happen because of these different types of growth factors produced here by the same, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, mediators or different cytokines. So uh, these are different things, uh, different cytokines, leukotrienes, chemokines secreted by the mast cells. And uh, this is the activating receptor here and here for the basophil in the mast cells. FCER1 uh, RI receptor for IgE or aminoglobulin E uh, is important here. This receptor, which is uh, here, is important with respect to development of allergies. So uh, we will discuss allergies later. But the number of these receptors on mast cells 
uh, you know, on average, there can be 250,000 receptors, but this number can go up to a million of these receptors on the mast cells. And these are the receptors for, uh, you know, the IgE antibodies, which when these are produced, the IgE antibodies are produced as a result of exposure to some allergen. Uh, so those antibodies would come here and bind to these. Uh, in eto um, atopic uh, individuals, individuals who are genetically predisposed to uh, develop some kind of allergic conditions are uh, when some hypersensitivity to something like pollens or carbohydrates or some other uh, thing. Uh, those uh, atopic individuals, of course, have a greater number of these receptors for the IgE. And that's why the response in such individuals uh, is uh, far more rapid and far more worse as compared to individuals who are not atopic and uh, they are not genetically predisposed. So the number of receptors on the mast cells in the case of uh, non-atopic individual would be less as compared to the atopic individual. That's why some people are more prone and they develop severe phenotypes. Now, these mouse cells can be activated by different, uh, you know, microorganisms. If when you talk about its activation, it can be activated by different allergens that I talked about. Different drugs can bring about activation, or uh, different toxins or physical stimuli can uh, just activate these mouse cells. And this is the activated form. The activated form is either degranulation that it would just, uh, you know, bring about, uh, you know, this outburst of uh, the granules. The granules would be released and these granules are filled with different, uh, you know, uh, tissue hormones or different enzymes or different cytokines or, uh, you know, uh, different uh, growth factors that we talked about. So all these venues when released would, uh, you know, produce uh, an inflammatory, an emergency inflammatory response inside the body, which would uh, actually uh, carry out the process or uh, defense process uh, in order to protect our body. But sometimes this response, uh, something can go wrong and this response can be, you know, uh, you know unwarranted in, in many cases, just like as you have seen in the case of COVID-19 or in different conditions, just like in different autoimmune disorders in which also the mast cells are involved. So at that time, the response um, need to be curtailed or it should be, uh, you know, uh, stopped at certain point, but uh, sometimes uh, you know, these uh, autoimmune conditions or different types of allergens can lead to a very, uh, you know, uh, exaggerated response that would uh, actually harm that particular individual who is experiencing it. And uh, these are different uh, cardiovascular, uh, cutaneous, gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, and other conditions. Now you can find all these symptoms as a result of activation of the mast cells when it is degranulated. Uh, then uh, you can you, you can find out all these symptoms in different organs. For instance, hypotension or decrease in the blood uh, pressure is a result of vasodilation because if histamine is released, it would dilate the vessels and blood pressure would be, uh, you know, uh, would come down. Uh, similarly, uh, syncope and syncope is when, uh, you know, uh, blood flow to uh, the brain, for instance, the brain is reduced and uh, that causes some kind of, uh, you know, unconscious consciousness or uh, a fainting. Uh, that is called syncope or lightheadedness, tachycardia increase in uh, the rate, uh, heart rate, for instance. Uh, uh, cutaneous symptoms are important because sometimes there would be flushing or pruritus or articaria or angioedema. These are different cutaneous conditions. And these either are caused by degranulation of the mast cells or simple accumulation of the mast cells. 
for instance, if the mast cells are accumulated under your skin tissue because they are present uh, in the skin, uh, this uh, part of can become reddish. There can be rash on your skin, and um, uh, uh, you know. Um, uh, it's called urticaria or pruritus if it becomes bumpy, or uh, sometimes also petula. I mean, you touch it, you know, some fluid will come out of it, uh, or, you know, that bumpy the skin also, if it is on, in the underlying tissue and lots of accumulation and degeneration has taken place, it can also lead to angioedema, or from, uh, you know, that swelling or, you know. And again, gastrointestinal tract, abdominal cramps, esophageal reflux, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, all these are signs of uh, the mast cells degeneration excessively when they are degenerate excessively due to some problem. If there is some allergen, you have eaten something that has triggered or activated the mast cells, then all these different signs can be experienced. Uh, in, the, uh, in different organs, you can see all the different uh, signs that uh, in primary mastocytosis is uh, uh, the sign that you would experience as a result of activation of the, uh, 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 you know, mast cells or accumulation of the mast cells, or proliferation of the mast cells uh, in tissues like the skin. Uh, bone marrow in gastrointestinal tract, and the symptoms I already have told you about. If the mast cells accumulate abnormally, uh, pro proliferate abnormally in the skin, uh, then you can find such kind of spots on the skin that you hear these, uh, uh, you know, red papules or some kind of rash. This is articaria pigmentosa that you are seeing here. This is the primary mast uh, mastocytosis. But the mastocytosis can also be secondary. In most cases, uh, it is secondary mastocytosis in which uh, you find more pronounced symptoms of the disease. For instance, in the case of allergy, the mast cell activation can happen in two ways. Either it would uh, go for degranulation or release all its granules uh, bit by bit or piecemeal or altogether or this activation uh, can be uh, controlled in a way uh, like the mast cells would be activated and it would secrete some kind of cytokines to activate other cells, but it would not degenerate. And it depends upon the receptors that which of the receptors uh, has been engaged on the mast cells. There are different types of receptors on the mast cells, as you can see, there are receptors for cytokines, CKR, cytokine receptors. Uh, for adenosine, there is a receptor, complement 5A, C3A, protease allergen, different uh, bacteria and viruses, they are, are received here with the help of all like receptors and other antigens. So for all different antigens, there are receptors uh, and there is FCER, uh, one receptor for the IgE antibodies, you know, the antibodies, immunoglobulin E antibodies that are produced by the B cells in our bodies. There is a specific receptor, FCER1. And I told you that the number of these receptors can be in, uh, you know, uh, millions or in lakhs, you know. Normally, in atopic individuals who are not genetically predisposed, FCR1 receptors may be uh, from 100 to 250,000, but this, in, in the case of atopic individuals, this uh, number can uh, rise exponentially. And you can find as many as 1 million receptors, uh, FCER1 receptors on a single cell. And these receptors for are for binding with IgA, e, uh, immunoglobulin E antibodies. So you can just imagine that the immunoglobulin uh, E antibodies, uh, IgE antibodies produced by the B cells, in response to some kind of antigens, all these immunoglobulins on atopic individuals, uh, mast cells, they are coming here and binding there. A million of the antibodies attaching to a single mast cell 
So what would be the response? I would just show, uh, tell you about the response, the effective phase of the mast cells in the next slide. But here, just want to, uh, you, you, you have to keep this in mind that due to the, uh, the, uh, the number of these receptors, some of the people are very prone to develop these allergic conditions uh, and others. So this mast cells can be activated by all these different means different cytokines, different uh, complements, different proteins, microorganisms, all these can activate the mast cells. And the mast cells activation depends upon which of the receptors, uh, you know, have been engaged. The type of activation depends upon it, whether it has to secrete simply the cytokines or it has to degranulate. For instance, in the case of uh, uh, TLR2 and TLR4, these are tall like receptors 2 and 4. Uh, these uh, tall like receptors present on the mast cells, there can be many, as many as uh, seven different tall like receptors present on uh, these mast cells. And you know the tall like receptors are uh, the PRRs, the pattern recognition receptors. They recognize patterns of bacteria or patterns of viruses or patterns of other. Uh, microbes uh, and the, the pathogen associated molecular patterns which are recognized by the PRR. So they are uh, um, uh, recognizing different things. Like for instance, from negative bacteria, they would have LPS or lipopolysaccharide, which is recognized by uh, tar like receptor 4, or uh, the peptidoglycan in gram positive bacteria would be recognized by tar like receptor 2. So all the bacteria would have would have uh, proteoglycans would be recognized uh, by, uh, by a TLR2 receptor. They would bind to TLR2 receptors here and activate the mast cells degeneration. But if it is TLR4, uh, LPS and it binds to uh, TLR4, so probably it would just you know activate the mast cells in a different way to release some kind of cytokines, but not to degenerate. So um, this happens here that well, it depends upon the type of uh, um, receptors and the priming factors that we discussed earlier also help with activation of the mast cells and whether to go for degeneration or to just release a different side of time. Uh, so uh, these receptors, the FCER1 receptor, as I told you, are particularly important with respect to um, with respect uh, to activation of the, uh, you know, uh, these cells to degenerate and uh, produce this allergic response. So, uh, because these IgE antibodies are integrated, once they are produced, they are integrated in uh, the membrane of this cell. And then these IgE antibodies, uh, you know, when the, that antigen or allergen enters your body again, that allergen goes there and attaches with the IgE. So this assembly of the allergen, uh, the aminoglobulin E, and the FCER1 receptor is a perfect trigger for degeneration of the mast cells, and it starts bombarding its granular site. And you saw that what are the dangerous things, are the powdered and different uh, granules there, and what kind of things those uh, you know, uh, chemical mediators or lipotrines or enzymes actually can do. They can bring about extensive damage in the surrounding tissue. They can, uh, you know, recruit other immune cells to the site where this happening is take pla taking place. And they can also, you know, that it would be an emergency-like situation. And that is called hypersensitivity. And uh, sometimes it can be very dangerous. So this is the last slide in which I just show you that there are two uh, uh, phases and uh, you know uh, three different types of cells involved in the sensitization phase and there is an effector phase. For instance, there is some allergen and you come in contact with the allergen for the first time. So there are dendritic cells everywhere in your body. The dendritic cells would just take up this antigen, chop it into pieces and then uh, a piece of that antigen would be shown on the membrane of uh, the dendritic cells with the help of MHC class 2 molecule. MHC class 2 is the hand 
the showing hint of the dendritic cell. Whatever the dendritic cell has to show to the outside world to some other immune cells that happens either with the help of MHC class one molecules, major histocompatibility complex class one or major, major histocompatibility complex class two molecules. So MHC2 molecules are particularly for these uh, different types of allergens are exogenous bacteria, virus pathogens, et cetera. MHC1 are for endogenous antigens. So uh, this hand specifically shows antigens com coming from outside part of the antigen, which is recognized by T helper two type cells with the help of the T cell receptors. And when they are uh, T cell receptors, they recognize the MHC2 and antigen complex, they bind with it. The T cell would secrete these um, interleukins. Interleukins are cytokines, interleukin-4 and interleukin-13. And these interleukin-4 uh, and 13 are very important cytokines because now these cytokines are going to affect the B cells. And the B cells uh, would be, uh, you know, activated in such a way that they, these T helper cells, when they, the T helper cells, what is their job? These T, uh, the job of the T helper cell is to, uh, uh, you know, present the antigen to the B cells and activate the B cells. So the B cells uh, uh, would make plasma cells and memory cells, and the plasma cells uh, would start secreting antibodies. This is an activated B cells, the plasma cell, the memory cell would keep the memory of this particular antigen while the B, plasma B cells, they would secrete uh, an antibody, which is uh, called the secretory immunoglobulin E or SIgE. So these, uh, when are these antibodies, immunoglobulin E are secreted, uh, these immunoglobulin E, they have specific receptors on the mast cells, as I told you in the RDL style FC, uh, ER1 receptors and FCR1 receptors are all over the mast cells. So these antibodies produced here in the serum or in the blood would all go there and bind, uh, you know, would, uh, it's, uh, one of its domain would anchor into the plasma membrane of uh, uh, these mast cells. So when you are exposed for the first time, uh, these uh, immunoglobulin E antibodies are made and all the antibodies are anchored on the, uh, you know, mast cells, everywhere on the mast cells. So their number, the number of the antibodies anchoring into these cells as the, the uh, could be in uh, a million. For instance, in the case of a single mast cells, as I told you that the number of receptor ACR1 on the mast cells for this specific antibody can be as much as, uh, you know, uh, one million uh, per cell. So you can just imagine that what would happen in that case. And that's why it's called membrane-bound immunoglobulin E. Uh, the immunoglobulins produced are either, uh, you know, free in secretory form when they are secreted or they can uh, be membrane-bound when they are just uh, go deep into the membrane. They are one of the domain uh, cross link with internal parts of the cell, so that is a membrane-bound immunoglobulin. So all these immunoglobulins are just fine here. Now in the factor phase, what happens that when somebody is, uh, uh, you know, when this antigen or the same allergen enters the body again, uh, you know, when it enters the body again, then it is the body's uh, mechanism. If there are lots of memory B cells present here, which are keeping the memory of this antigen already through this process, the T helper two process, uh, 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 process and the B cells in which these three different types of cells are involved, uh, then these memory cells are clonally expanded. It happens in the case of the, uh, uh, all antigens. Uh, that uh, when the memory cells are present here, the memory cells would be clonally expanded. It means millions of copies of these uh, cells would be made. And these cells, when their clonal expansion takes place, the memory cells are made, uh, the plasma cells also 
are made and their clonal expansion takes place, the plasma cells, all of them would just uh, go and secrete antibodies. But that is the normal process for the antigens. What happens here that uh, these antigens, when they enter uh, the body, there are lots of mast cells. All the cells are covered with immunoglobulin E antibody. Uh, you know, as I told you, now this antigen, uh, these antigens, when they enter for the second time, the the same thing happens with the mast cell. As I told you about the memory in the plasma cells that these cells are engaged by the antigen because this antigen is specific to this antibody. This antibody here was made as a result of a part of, uh, you know, this uh, particular allergen or antigen, and it is, has entered again. So it's specific antibodies already there on the mast cells. When it attaches to the mast cells, the mast cells uh, um, and the immunoglobulin E uh, antibody and the FCR1 receptor is a perfect combination to trigger start this degeneration and uh, release all these different cytokine histamine triptases, prostaglandins that uh, give you the sensation of pain. And it causes acute anaphylaxis, asthma, otic area, rhinorrhea, conjunctivitis, all these different conditions. Or it can also cause chronic anaphylaxis if these cells release interleukin-5, but if the T helper 2 cells release interleukin-5, it would directly affect the eosinophils uh, to produce eczema or prolonged gasping uh, in some cases. So this is the mechanism of, uh, you know, uh, allergies and uh, the involvement of the mast cells in this process that how the mast cells are working and why these hypersensitivity reactions are so fast uh, sometimes are in so dangerous as well because uh, these hypersensitivity reactions um, sometimes can kill individual too um, if the response is uh, very robust or very ex very much exaggerated it happen so there was about mass cells uh, thank you very much for watching this. Maybe we will discuss some more topics in detail later. Thank you.